Hello, my name is Frank. Hello, welcome to Earth Dragon Art. This is part two of my 2016 Frankenstein's Monster. In my last video you saw me do the line work and some of the colouring. Today we're going to do the second part of this video. So let's roll the credits and I'll tell you a bit more about it. In my last video, as I mentioned, I was doing the outlines and the colouring in. Today I'm going to be focusing on mainly the face and also the bolts on his neck. So refining that and putting some colour into it. I do hope you enjoy this video, but just a couple of things just to mention before going ahead. One, this was done on Facebook via my phone. So the quality of the picture, as much as I've tried to enhance it as best I can, is not the greatest. So I do apologise in advance for the grainness of the, of the image. But hopefully you can still follow along and get an idea of what my thought process was during that time. Number two. At the time, my anatomy skills were still in development, so some of the proportions and sizes and don't quite match the way they should do. I have made some adjustments later down the line, but I am still working on that, and I've done some new versions of it that are a bit better proportionally. But you'll have to wait for that, that particular video once I start making it and culling that one in. And three, I've edited out bits that I don't think were important to the video, so I've kept all of my little anecdotes and things that I felt that would relate to the actual video itself. So without any further waffling on, let's roll the tape. Good evening everybody, I will answer them as and when I can, but if you can bear with me because I'll be hiding behind the, the actual... For those that have been watching this stream over the last few weeks, so far I've been working on my Halloween picture, as you can see in the background, and the last character I did was the mummy, which you can see on the far right. And yes, last time I was actually working on the ink inside of the Frankenstein. So I'm going to be doing some colouring inside. I probably won't colour all of it. I will try and do some of it. Um, mainly because I'm going to be doing some, some touch-ups as well before I start actually the painting side of it. But I'll go into that in just a moment. To begin with, um, I say this is what I've been doing before. Um, when I originally did the uh, original artwork, this was the Frankenstein that I did. I don't know if you can see it very well, but this is my original Frankenstein. And as you can probably see, I went on the original picture, I went for kind of the traditional, blocky, robotic Frankenstein character. And while that's, he's always fun to do and everything else, he's been done to death. And whereas Fra Dracula has kind of had many different iterations with things like Blade, for example, a few the day walkers quite a few different vampire type films that have been out but they have made a lot of creations but frankenstein has never really been reinvented so what i wanted to do was kind of reinvent him quite considerably so um, what i've done is this is my current frankenstein now you might not be able to see everything because I'm, I'm working through the color scheme at the moment but what i've tried to go for is something very very aggressive very buff and I tried to give the clothing a very old style to it. And what I've been doing the last few days is around sort of the trousers, the, leg, the leggings or whatever you call those things, pantaloons, that's the word, and some of the skin. I've just tried to tighten up, just fit in all the little gaps, making sure all the skin areas are completely covered. Because when I come to painting, 
it's going to be a major part of just really getting that painting in the right place when I go to do it. So I just want to ensure that I've cleared it. So what I'm going to be doing today um, is I'm going to be finishing off with just filling all the gaps. So for example, if you look at this shoe here, from a distance it looks fine, but if you look closely, you'll see that there's some areas where it's it's showing the pencil lines. What I want to try and do is I want to fill those bits in so that again, when it comes to colouring, it I can select that colour and just colour that part. And I think ultimately it'll make the picture look look good. So we're gonna, we're gonna get to work on that. Oops, some of the music's paused, there we go. So let's get to that. Okay, so we're on the shoes, so let me go and find my shoes. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do with the shoes is I'm going to take my ink, my um, standard ink brush, which I think I've already got, there we go, I've got my standard ink brush. I'm going to select the colour like I did the last time, and I'm just going to carefully just fill in all the gaps. Like that, like that. Like that. And I've got it quite zoomed in so I can get all the colours, so I can make sure I've got all the edges all done. And the good thing is I can fix places where it's not quite right. I mean, one thing I'm hoping that this will do, and I don't know if it will until the end, but um, it might work, it might not, but I've still got the outlines, is I'm hoping that doing this, when it comes to the end bit, I will actually be able to remove the lines completely and only the colours will actually get the character work. Because one of the things that I'm trying to get better at is the digital painting. I don't particularly like real painting, you know, oil painting, watercolours, I'm not really a fan of that kind of painting. Even, to be fair, even digital painting, you know, I wouldn't say that I dislike it, but I wouldn't say I'm a particular fan, because it takes, it is basically painting, figuring out what colours work together, what goes you know, um, getting all the shading right. However, I hate what I don't like even more is colouring in. I want things to be coloured in, but I don't actually like the process of colouring in because again, it just takes so long. This is another reason why digital painting is better to some degree because although it looks, you know, it can take, it can still take time. Ultimately. It can, you know, potentially, once I get used to how to do it, it can be a lot faster. And more importantly, the colours are more solid. I mean, you look at these colours now, how, how solid they are. It's one straight colour. You can't really see any uh, variance in, variance in, in the, the shade of colour. I don't know how, to, how you'd put it, but... To try and explain that is, you know, when you um, you have you use your felt tip pens, for example, whenever you go over with your felt tip pen and it all dries up, you don't have a solid one color. You don't have solid black or solid blue. What you tend to find is you have all the lines where you've been brushing the pen, the, the pen back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you've got these lines in between on the drawing. That doesn't look terrible. I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks nice. But if you want a nice, clean drawing, the only real way of doing it probably is by using oil paint. It's probably the one, or perhaps, perhaps acrylics. Uh, anybody experts with painting will probably know. So I don't. I'm not going to profane that I know. Um, so if you are a painter and you know, please don't shoot me. <laughs> I'm just doing from what I understand. Oil paint is probably the only paint that I'm aware of that will probably do a solid colour. But again, the problem with oil paints is, for one thing, it takes forever to dry. And that's one of the biggest things. I've only got one actual oil paint that I've ever done, and that was only because it was part of my course. And for those who visit my house, they'll, it's the one, uh, it's the one of my, you know, self-portrait with all the different. Uh, different colours in uh, on, on the segments of my face. So for those who do know, that's the one that um, the only oil paint that I've ever done. And I have no desire, right, at least right, not right now, to do any kind of painting. Maybe in the future I might change my mind. Who knows? 
uh, something might happen and I might get bored drawing or bored digital painting and we'll do it. But for now, this for me is the best one for painting. And the reason why is because I feel like this is just drawing. This is kind of me using my colour pencils to draw. But going back to what I was saying, the difference between this and the felt tip pens is, as I said, the colour scheme just, you could just tell where, you, where all the pen marks have been. And I don't, when I want a picture, I want it to be nice and smooth and clean. And even when I do do my pen work, I always try and go over it once or twice or three times or however many times I need to go, just so that I can um, get it as dark as I can possibly get. Okay, so that's the first shoe done. I'll do this one from a distance a little bit, just to try and see if I can speed up the process a little bit, but I need to zoom in to get the final results on it. I say I don't want to spend too long doing this bit because it can it can be it's not I suppose it needs drawing to can be it, 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 it just takes time. But look at but say look at the difference in that look at how particularly if you look at the leg here, look how solid that colour is. There's no blemishes, you can't see where I've been brushing, whereas on a pen you'd see where I was brushing and everything. But hopefully one thing that I do hope that this painting and all this thing I'm doing now that I'm doing that I'm showing you will give you an appreciation for how much work is, is goes into making an artwork. For example, this this guy already I've spent at least two hours already. No, actually to tell a lie, um I spent probably I'd say probably about three, maybe four hours in total doing this guy. Um, the first hour or so was just design, coming up with the concept, doing some test runs and design ideas, coming up with the concept of him in pencil. And not just doing pencil, but drawing it in very light pencil, then going on to doing it, refining the details, trying to put, clean up the lines, make them clearer. Going another stage further, having a harder pencil, and really pulling out the details, adding new elements all the time to get the character right. And again, going further, getting another depth. Of, for example, um, I've used, on this drawing alone, I've used a H4, a H3, H2, H, HB, um, B1, and yeah, I think B, I think. I think B is probably HB is probably the last one I've used, but I do sometimes use the B and the HB pencil, the B and the B1 pencil, because each time I'm doing it, I'm just refining it, refining, it, refining it, and getting more and more done on the picture. The next stage of that was just the initial inking in, putting in the lines. In fact, more I did do the B pencil because I did some shading on where the muscle shade was and everything like, like that to try and figure out all the different elements of his tone so when I do paint it I know where it's all where it's all going. And then I had to do the the inking in. And for those who don't know what inking in is, it's basically taking a pencil drawing and physically adding a line, you know, like um how do I put it? Black pen ink all around it. Really, really get you know just drawing all the different uh, all the different lines, uh, all the different lines of the. Sorry, just I'm just concentrating a bit. All the, literally the different lines. And basically, all see all of these little lines around here. This is what was inked in where I inked in the different lines. And even then, took another, uh, started with like a point, point 0.1, or point zero 0.01 even, point 0.1, then a point 0.2, then a point 0.3, and then a point 0.8, just to define the lines so that once some are clear, some are not clear. Hopefully in another video I'll start to, I'll show you a bit more about what I'm talking about with the different lines I'm using so you can understand where I'm coming from. But that that basically gives me the basic shapes of putting them onto the computer here. 
And with this guy as well, I then went on and did the line digitally. So all these lines up that you're seeing now on a digital version where I put it on the computer and we'll find them. Um, let me show you the original so if I can. Right, this is the original this is the original version of this character. Okay, so here's the different stages of this character. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see him. Okay. Right, this is the first one I did. This is the first <coughs> pencil drawing. And if you look there's all the different shades of the muscle, tone um, got the face in there with all the different teeth and things like that. And you look at the teeth as well. The teeth are not completely straight. They're not, you know, I, I did that to get the idea, but it's, but some of the detail is not that clear on this character. Right, I then went to the next stage and just refined it a bit. And you can see here, it's, it's just a little bit clearer what's, what's in the face, particularly the teeth. You can see there's more definition in the feet, feet and the eyes. Okay. The next guy, this is just where I blacked it in. Um, I actually just use a computer on this and just use a computer to lighten and dark it, but it's not it's still not clear. And then I faded that one out and redrew him. So this is the redrawn version. And you can see the difference. So you look at this one here compared to So you look at this one here compared to that. Let me move his head down. Zoom out slightly. So this is the this is the original head. See how much the more detail and how much clearer it is to see all the different elements of the bolt and things like that compared to the original. So this is just to give you some idea of how much work actually goes into any one of these drawings. And hopefully, you know, this video of these that you're watching today will help give you a bit of an appreciation for the amount of work that does actually go into crafting these ideas. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the eyes. So, uh, let me get into the right one, let's on the right screen. There we go. So, I've got some nice golden looking eyes here, making them look like they're old and decrepit and everything else. So, I'll get my brush again. It's fine. Okay, so we've got that's the eyeball. This is the pupil, uh, not the pupil, um, the retina, that's it. And again, do the same thing before. Sample this colour and just colour in. And again, this is just so that I can, you know, when it comes to the colour in the end, even perhaps without the lines, once I've done this, maybe without the lines, you'll probably see a bit clearer what this is going to look like. It probably doesn't look like I'm doing very much on that, but I'm actually just filling in just a gap so, that, so there's no gaps at all. Um, let me see if I can see what it looks like without the outline. Um, See on the outline, see here how the how there's no gaps now. Although I have seen there's a bit of a gap here, so I'm going to do this bit up here. There's that little spot in the middle is where the pupil's going to be. In fact, let's add some pupils in. I know I've added it in. Let's have it. Okay. The good thing about this is I just do circles. Done. More detail will be added to that as well. And as, as I move forward, you'll see it's developing. Okay, so. So we know that the eye is done. Okay, so let's close the eye pond. That's all done. One thing always remember, always remember to say, I know some, you might not think it's a droid, but always seeing your work as you go along. Photoshop does have its own save function. And it has a neat feature nowadays where you can actually, if it crashes for any reason, it actually allows you to resave it. So it, it, it remembers what you last did. Now, to be honest, on the scars, it actually the scars actually look like they're okay. They don't need a lot of work. Just maybe some little tweaks here. The scars on the whole look like they're fairly 
don't really seem to need much doing. The only, the only areas I can see is where there's like where it's creeping into the face. So I'll just highlight in those little bits there. I'm trying to be careful not to cover too much because I don't know if you can tell but there's stitches going on there uh, on the side of the face there. So I'm just trying not to go into the stitches so I don't have to repaint over them ideally. The stitches will go over the top anyway, so it's not the end. If it, if it does go over, it's not the end of the world. I'm just trying to get all the scars in there. The thing with scars, I'm trying to make them so that they do have a point to them, like a sharp end, just to give them that sense of realism that they are scars. These are sort of um, sort of the cracks in the top of the face. It's on my particular version of Frankenstein, I've actually made him look like. The stitches come apart, and mm -hmm. is, some of his insides are, are starting to show. In the original cartoon, or the original sort of versions of them, or typical um, images that you see in Frankenstein, okay, I'm good. He tends to have uh, scars anyway, but you never actually see what's beneath the scars. You know they're there, but you don't know kind of why. Give it a bit of. Aging. The way it is, is um, the character of Frankenstein was basically body parts from different people. He's created, you know, well, sorry, correction, Frankenstein monster was created by Dr. Frankenstein with many different pieces of uh, deceased bodies. And that's where the old idea came from. So I'm just trying to. So I've made his skin kind of a yellowish colour where it just shows where it's been a bit old. And the fact it's all cracked as opposed to being just loose skin. To give the idea of that, you know, it's it's been drying for a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the plan, Carl. <laughs> <Well lost. laughs> Hope you are though, mate. I'm just trying to make them all look dry and cracked. You know, like, um, best to describe it, you think of, you know, like the uh, pictures of deserts where, where there's been a, where the sun's not been, I'm good. You know, the sun's been a bit intense and you've got all this dry sand with all cracks on it. That was kind of the look or the impression I was going for. what I'm doing guys, I'm just um, cleaning up some of the lines before I start painting on the character because um, I want to try and have this guy painted without lines if I can. Just some reason different, I'm training myself to try and paint better. I'm still trying to learn to do these things quicker as well. I will get faster as I go along. So keep going. The more I do this, the bigger I am going to get. And truth be said, speed is not about doing it faster. It's really down to confidence. That's where the speed comes. You know, artists trying to be quick, really trying to be faster at what they're doing, and being super, 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 super fast. And and they get frustrated because they're not quick enough. And then you're saying, you know, it's not about speed, it's not about being fast, it, you know, you need to take your time on it. And that is so true. And I'll tell you the reason why I say it's true is because it's about confidence. If you're trying to be quick for the being quick sake, you're not going to really learn much. You're not going to really grow in your, your skills and your, your ability because you're trying to be quick. Instead of thinking, well, I need to be, I need to be good at what I'm doing. I need to do it well. So here's how he looks at the moment. So you can start to see 
and it's starting to come together now. Okay, so it start the cracks are starting to show, and you start, you start to see his face come through. And see how the see how the lines are all now sort of clean against each other, blending together. I think once I finish painting this bit, once I finish doing this, hopefully all things going well, it should show up where I need to work and where I need to clean, you know, add extra colours in it. But I'm working on it piece by piece until I get there. Okay, so we'll do the next bit of stitches. This is the actual stitching. Well, to be honest, that doesn't look too bad actually. That stitching looks quite good. It doesn't look too out of place. But we'll do it anyway. <laughs> you sure? You sure it's not me in the mornings? Well, there's one thing I want to do with this guy um, when it comes to digital painting. Which, I, to be honest, I struggle doing in drawing and drawing characters. Is making these stitches look like they're going into his skin. Um, I've thankfully never had a stitch, any stitches in me. But obviously, stitches when you have when you have an injury and you get stitches by the doctor or whatever, those stitches go into your skin just like they do in clothes. And I imagine that there, you know, there is a little bit of a bend on the surface of your skin as it goes as these stitches are in. And um, I did try initially to draw in those those edges, but it didn't quite look right. So I'm hoping that as I, you know, pursue the painting side of this character, that I can add the sense that there is some kind of bend in the surface of the skin to make it look like the stitches are actually penetrating the surface, penetrating his face. And I'll be honest again with the stitches. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do the typical way of stitches. You know, like a big scar and this. There's lines across it. I mean, it, it's fine for a cartoon for just a quick comical sketch. But if you've seen, but for those who've seen the, you know, who've been watching and seen the picture, the the main picture I've I've been drawing. Um. You'll, you'll see that that just wouldn't work. It would just look out of place because it would look tacky and, and unrealistic. Not that I've gone for gone for realism necessarily, but what I am what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw a character that looks at least like he actually has stitches, and there's a reason why he's got those stitches. They're not just there because oh, he's he's a He's a monster, so therefore he has to choose. Right, I think that's the stitches done. Right, okay, so that's the stitches bit. So, so Right. Um, okay, so the next thing we'll do, I know you're probably wondering why I'm not filling these in. These bits here. Um, just to show you over there. I know I've already coloured them in somewhere on this thing, on this um, painting, so until I find it, I'm going to leave those for a moment and come back to them. Right, so I'm going to do the hair next. So I'm going to have a nice dark set of hair. Right, you can see here where I've missed the, where the hair is not completely coloured. This is where, where this bit that I'm doing right now is important. Because that way it makes the hair really stand out the top. Okay, so just trying to get the hair in there. And again, this is just to make it easier. But when it comes down to the actual painting side of it, I'm going to need to have a solid level of one colour to what's the word I'm looking for here um, that I can put into what's called a clipping mask. And the clipping mask paint is, in a nutshell, a means of just high, of Preventing and colouring anything else but that particular area that I want to clean, want to um, uh, want to paint. So, for example, so for example, if I'm putting some shade on it or I'm putting some hairlines on it, 
instead of the hairlines going over the face like that, the clipping mask, I can do that, but the clipping is only colour here, one colour there. When I do that part, you'll see what I'm talking about when I get to that part. It probably won't be tonight. I wanted to do it tonight, but I don't think I'm going to do it tonight. Because this is going to take take a little bit, bit of time to get this get this all done. And I think it's going to make a massive, massive difference once it is. The good thing is, it's only really seems to be the edges where the hair sort of, the strands are sort of sticking out. It seems to be even work. So I'm going to put the eyebrows with the eyes, so that kind of makes sense to have them all, them all together. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in, do the eyebrows. Again, the eyebrows shouldn't take too much work. It's not like the hair, and some of the, and like the stitches, there's not, A, they're very small, and B, they're pretty solid in terms of the colour. I think with the eyebrows, doing when I did them rigid, because it was such a big solid shape, it wasn't such a difficult task to colour them in. It's always a scary thing to talk about, you know, one's art in, on a personal level. Because it's, um, I'll be honest, it's very difficult to talk about your artwork without sounding like you're being pretentious or arrogant or self-glorifying. But I will say this for me is I've never, not that I've not liked my art, I've always liked my the artwork I've done, but I've never really felt like I'm good, I'm great, I'm... and I know a lot of artists will say the same thing. They all, a lot of artists, even though they're brilliant artists, and some of the, there's some, I'm, I'm not even close to some of the artwork that I've seen out there. And, and I know that all of them will say, Oh, yeah, my artwork's not that great. The reason why I'm saying the things I'm saying is more because I'm learning to appreciate. The skill that I've been given, you know, it is a learn. It is something you can learn. You can, anyone can learn to draw. You know, it's not out of anyone's reach if you really put your mind to it. Um, I know it sounds like I'm quoting Back to the Future, but but it is true. If you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. You can get better at these sort of things. And in the recent months since I've been sort of doing this, well, there's that. Bit I was looking for. Okay, is I've learned that um, I've learned to appreciate that it's something I've grown in. It's an area that I've developed, and I'm more confident about the you know the skills that I've gained doing this. Um, so it's not a big headedness. It's not a I'm so good at this and I'm. Uh, I don't think that way at all. I find it hard to even think that I'm that I am good. It's only other people that have really shown me that that I've got, you know, that they shown they they show me their appreciation of what I do, and that's given me the confidence and the courage to keep going. But it's not been something I personally felt like. Yeah, I'm really good at this. I'm really, I've got I'm an expert, not an expert, but. That I have, that I'm talented, or I'm this, or whatever it, whatever term people use on my on my on my skills, I've not really felt the set that that I am that I am that good. It has taken a lot of soul, not soul searching. I don't think that's the right word to use. But I have certainly had to learn to be grateful that I've been given an ability to do this kind of stuff and I'm trying to be more and I've learned to be confident rather than discouraged of thinking that someone else is better than me or I'm not good enough or whatever. And it's been a you know it's been a real positive journey for me of late. And even with this guy, although I'm happy with how he looks generally, I still feel I can do better. I still feel like I can improve on that. Um, that I can grow that I can Perform this task much more effectively, and it's and again, it's not a negative thing. It's not or an arrogant thing. It's just I'm more confident in my ability to improve on something I've done, as opposed to hoping I can do it, hoping I can achieve it, hoping I can 
be the create you know be as creative as I as I'm trying to be. And that's not been you know, it's not natural to me to feel that confident. This is probably the one of the bits that I've been looking forward to the most in this character is the bolts. So I'm going to scroll down to the bolts. Right, so here's all the bolts. So what I'm going to do first, rather than just trying to paint each individual bolt as I go along, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide some of the colours first so I can only see the colours I'm cut starting with. It just makes it easier for me to see where the edges are. Um, when I'm doing this. So that's kind of the reason behind this. From this angle, it looks like this is purple. I know it's not, but it looks like it's purple. <laughs> and again, this is only the base colour. This is only the base colour. This is not a finished colour scheme. So just to be just to be aware of that, you know, it will there will be more colours going on this. I'm going to try to keep these lines as straight as I can. Of all the things in this picture the bolts have got to be the most accurate and straight and lined up. So obviously bolts are, are dead straight. Unless, unless they're chipped and even then, you know, they still have their level of, um, what's the word? They still have that sense of form, sense of symmetry. Symmetry, that's what I was thinking. Now it might look like some of these are looking a bit odd with all the lines in sort of the darker lines outline on the purple, but my goal is to kind to be able to remove those lines completely. So when I've finished the bolts, I'll show you what I mean. And this should look a lot, lot, lot neater. This is probably the most defining one because this is the bit that goes underneath the bolts. So it gives it the shape, so I have to get this one right. I'm going to remove, going to hide the outline. I'm hoping that that's going to show. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. See now I can see where these lines are going to go. I can see it a bit clearer. So it's like whenever you have a, you know, like an, um, when you have a screw. Any kind of screw, this you've got the actual bits that the that screw together, and then you have the actual um, middle part that kind of holds it all together. And that's the bit that I'm trying to get looking at least like it's there's a there's a core to the bolt itself. And this is good because it now shows me where I need to add some extra colours. Whereas with the outline on it, it doesn't. And it wasn't so easy to spot. And again, you can see where I need to add some core a bit more. See, that's the one problem when you're inking it in, particularly when you're inking it in, you're putting it on the computer as well. It hides some of the, the line work. And what do you think? Because the light there is a black line in between the colours that you've put in. It looks like there's no gaps. But when you remove that black line, that's when you kind of see all the little gaps and pieces that need to be added to give this the sense of depth that it needs. Now, what that means is it means I'm going to have to go round and fill in those fill in those blue bits again where I've edited this, so, so it all blends together nicely. In fact, the core probably needs, even needs to go underneath this as well, so that it will really, really blend properly. To be fair, I probably could have done this by putting them underneath each other anyway, in the right order. But um, you know, it's some of the things I haven't, haven't really done or thought I thought I'd covered, but uh, you know, just didn't quite cover it. Okay, so that's the bolts done. Uh, I'm going to change this to core. 
I think one mistake I think I've done, not, well, it was not sort of a mistake, which I didn't consider, is I should have put this bit on a separate layer to this bit because although I've used the same colour, it means that I can't, it's going to be harder for me to separate the core from that. So it's not a problem, it just means it just makes it a little trickier. This whole process I'm doing is about refining this so that it looks more uh, as accurate as I can get it. I want, it, I want this to be as, as bolt looking as I can possibly get it. And I can see, you know, this is this has shown me that there are some elements that I need to work on. So I must be honest, I didn't actually expect this to be as complicated, this bit, as complicated as I thought. So, you know, it's a good, good learning curve. I'll be honest, I think I've worked on probably the bolts the most in this whole piece. Out of everything I've done, this is probably one that's taken the most time. Well, I think once I've done the bolts and I'll probably leave it, give it, call it a night for that. I admit I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I, you know, I would say I apologise for that, but I need to be, I'm going to do this kind of stuff, I need to make them do it right. So we'll do this one slightly differently. Because I know the core was the main issue, let's do the core first. I think because of what I've learned from the previous one I've just finished, might have a better way of doing this one, which probably takes so long. Again, you can probably see what I'm saying about you know these things can take time. Now, I'm, it's only probably taking me so much time because I'm not really you know it's it's not digital paint is not a skill I've really learned um, that effectively yet. Drawing is one thing. Doing this is you know, digital painting is a lot more trickier and, and it's a case of just learning how I can make this work in the quickest possible way. And because I'm a stickler for detail, I'm probably taking, to be fair, I'm probably taking a lot longer than somebody that's really used Photoshop more extensively. Someone who's a bit more familiar with it probably zip through this and straight away know, oh yeah, you should do this, you should do that, whatever. I'm not skilled in terms of that, at, that, at that level yet, where I can really do that. It's just something that I'm going to have to, to really learn. Now, what I was saying about layer masks and stuff like that, this isn't layer masks, but because I've got it over the top, this is a layer, I can paint on here and see how it only comes on the yellow bit. See, this one's almost done already. There's a nice looking box there. As I'm doing this, I'm seeing things where I can tweak it and make it, you know, fix things that don't quite look right. Right, I think that's about it for tonight. Um, so there's my bolts, and they see they look no, not too bad actually. Once I've finished colouring in, the bolts should look a bit better. Also put all shading and colour and shine, but they're looking they're looking all right so far. I think so that's where it's at at the minute. Look at the difference between the bolt after the lines in and the lines without. And that's kind of what I was trying to go for, so that the lines without looked better than the lines within. Alright, well I think that, that's it for tonight. I'm getting a bit tired and just need to take a rest. I say I hope this is good.
The last part two. You want to see part three? Well, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss part three. Oh, and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. <laughs>